Today we're going to be taking a look at the Tiago 808. Now, those of the keen eyed among you, as well as people that maybe have seen me over the past couple of uh, months, I would say, you know that I've been skating the 808s. They're definitely uh, not on the same level as the 1010s, but I think that's for a reason, and there are definitely some very good reasons to get this shoe. Let's get into it. So first things first, their marketing page does not really have a whole ton about the shoe. It's not like really trying to sell you the shoe. Product features, right, and it's got, it talks about the midsole, uh, the suede mesh upper, an overlay for high wear areas, and then a lace gilly system. And all of those features are present, and a lot of those features were present on the 1010. It doesn't have phantom fit, but it has all these different layers around the collar, has the exact same insole as the 1010s, has this absorbs midsole. This is what they were talking about. It's supposed to help with impact resistance. Gilly lace system is these two rubber eyelets as well as some interior eyelets that go up the bulk of the shoe. Now, as you can see, this is my uh, my left foot, so it's my switch foot. There is there is a bit of wear and tear here and there, not as much as I would like, honestly. But I really like the aesthetic of the shoe. The shoe itself is really awesome. I, I really like the exaggerated logo. It's not super in your face and doesn't like it doesn't scream New Balance like maybe the 1010s did, but it definitely gives it a good look and it kind of looks right with the shoe. Now, one of the main questions I would get asked about these is if, if they were just, they had like a crazy break-in period because they were so thick, which, you know, looking at them, they're definitely chunkier than a regular shoe, especially nowadays, but they don't, uh, I didn't notice any significant issue with breaking them in. In fact, I really liked them. They weren't too chunky, they weren't too heavy, they didn't bug me a whole lot. And that's one of the craziest complaints I've heard about them is, you know, somebody's like, I've had several people just say, I don't know, I've thought about buying them, but I haven't just simply because of how chunky they are. I don't know if I can get used to those chunky shoes again. And I wouldn't even say they're chunky chunky. They're, they're definitely not on the par with like shoes from 15 years ago, but they are a little bit bigger than maybe a more slimline shoe like maybe what I'm wearing now, the Telfords. But yeah, the bulk of the shoe didn't really have an effect for me as much as maybe some people would think it would. I had a really uh, interesting time adjusting to them and let's get into that. Now, what I mean about interesting time adjusting to them is mainly um, they were kind of odd fitting. I wouldn't say they fit quite true to size. I'd say probably buy them a half size up because for a really long time, I was actually just having lots of issues with just pain points around my foot. It felt like my foot was almost being choked and it was just being squeezed. And I don't necessarily blame the shoes for that. I blame me for thinking that I tried on a right size when I really kind of didn't. If you're gonna get these, I would definitely for sure recommend getting them a about a half size bigger. I even, when I was at the shop, one of my buddies was actually trying on almost a full size bigger and was thinking that he was gonna do those ones. So for sure, definitely not a true to size fit. I would definitely buy them just a little big. But other than the weird pain points and me buying a size that was a little bit too small, I really liked the way they skated. Now the board feel did lack a little bit because of this. And you know, that's to be expected. They are a little bit of a chunkier shoe, but I think you can take away a little bit of the board feel just for that extra comfort. Now on the subject of how they skated, they kind of skated exactly like you would think a regular cup sole would skate. They did have a really good flick in the beginning, but I felt like the flick definitely tapered off as they got older and it tapered off pretty hard. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna show you why. Uh, that's the beat up version. So yeah, it's kind of obvious to see why the flick tapered off super hard as they got older, but heel flips always felt really consistent and good. Did really like how I skated in these shoes. They were really comfortable and honestly, they made me feel comfortable. Not quite as comfortable as the 1010s uh, because the, the profile is just a little bit shorter, but the 1010s were had that extra lift to make your foot feel really secure. These ones, not so much. Where, the, where this shoe really truly shines is with 
impact protection and just uh, durability in general because there's just so there's just a bunch of extra material there leading to better impact protection you're not going to feel it as much and all that extra material is going to take longer to wear away than say a pair of vans right obviously the first point of failure was going to be the toe area it did hold out for quite a while and i would say most of the damage to this shoe happened in the last couple of sessions I've been in these shoes since early February, so about three months, not too bad, but I also considering that my skateboarding and frequency has ramped up significantly since then because of the warmer weather, it kind of makes sense. Now for the sole itself, you can see parts where I'm kind of starting to wear through and get to the secondary rubber, but overall it held up really, really well. I did go through most of the tread on both shoes, nothing too major. This the sole of the shoe actually outlasted the body which is great that is a great problem to have as for the heel area the heel area is still very much intact and holding up really really well especially considering i probably do more heel flips and heel flip variations than i do kick flips it's insane that it still looks this good for laces i didn't go through any i did have to tie it up once but other than that it this lasted me a total the life of the shoe, which is awesome, good thing to have. Now, as for the insole, I'm kind of not really a fan of it. I feel like this one is maybe a little bit thinner than the 1010, because I felt like the insole on the 1010 was better. Maybe it was just the insole on the actual shoe, not the, not the uh, orthotic part of it. But for this one, I was not super impressed. Impact protection was good, and it felt very stiff and strong, especially, I would think, because of this, but I don't think that this helped out a whole lot. I did try a pair of these on with some FPs and they felt significantly better. So that might be one thing to keep in mind. Other than that, pretty solid, durable shoe. I mean, it was only three months, but the frequency of my skating has ramped up significantly. Um, I wouldn't say they are the best in terms of durability, but they're definitely not the worst. So overall, are these shoes worth it? Well, right now I think you can get them for about 110 for specifically this colorway. Um, I know I did see somewhere for like $85 that you can get a handful of the colorways on sale. Now, I think for $109, this shoe is not really in contention with the 1010. Because the 1010 has a ton more going into it, I feel like the 1010 lasted longer and felt better just overall in general. So trying to charge the same amount of money for some, for literally a more inferior, lesser shoe kind of doesn't really sit right with me the right way. Now, if they were gonna charge like maybe 99 or 89 as like a regular price for these shoes, for sure, 100%. But just the fact that they're charging the same for the Tiago 1010s, I would tell you to go with the 1010s all day. Would I pay the, uh, the same price uh, for a lesser shoe just based on the aesthetics? Yeah, probably. It's kind of irritating because a lot of shoes just, I feel like they just keep getting more and more and more expensive. Definitely keep an eye out on your sales rack. There's lots of really good stuff that will a lot of the time end up on skate shop sales racks. For 109, I would say I wouldn't get them. I would definitely go with the 1010s. If you can pick them up on sale, for sure do it that way. But overall, if you really just want to try these, these are not a bad shoe to get. They're kind of a good middle of the road. They have decent board feel. They skated really well. I really like the aesthetic. I think that uh, this shoe definitely has a place and it almost makes me want to go and buy a half size larger and put some FPs in it and skate another pair of them just to see if that would make me like them even more. Because I feel like a lot of the reason I didn't have a great experience with the shoe is just simply because I bought the wrong size. But the size felt right to me. It just didn't feel right after I'd already been skating it for a couple of days and I was realizing that they it wasn't me needing to break the shoes in it was the shoes not fitting me right if you guys found anything in this video helpful or you have any comments or maybe you've even skated these shoes let me know down in the comments let's talk about them i think these are definitely worthy of a conversation and i will see you guys in the next one peace